In today's video, I'll answer your question, do babies and children go to heaven when they die? Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. The Bible doesn't explicitly answer the question of whether children who die before they are born again go to heaven. However, enough indirect information can be pieced together from scripture to provide a satisfactory answer which relates to infants as well as those with mental handicaps and others. The Bible speaks to the fact that all of us born of human parents are born with an inherited corruption from Adam that ensures we will inevitably sin. This is often referred to as original sin. While God created Adam and Eve in his own likeness, Genesis chapter 5 verse 1, the Bible says that once Adam and Eve fell and became sinful, Adam fathered children in his own likeness, Genesis chapter 5 verse 3. All human beings have inherited a sinful nature through Adam's original act of disobedience. Adam became sinful and he passed that sinfulness along to all his descendants. The Bible speaks matter-of-factly about children who do not know enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 16. One reason people are guilty before God, Romans chapter 1 says, is that they refuse to acknowledge what is clearly seen and understood concerning God, Romans chapter 1 verse 20. People who, upon seeing and evaluating the evidence of nature, reject God are without excuse. This raises some questions. If a child is too young to know right from wrong and possesses no capacity for reasoning about God, then is that child exempted from judgment? Will God hold babies responsible for not responding to the gospel when they are incapable of understanding the message? We believe that granting saving grace to babies and young children on the basis of the sufficiency of Christ's atonement is consistent with God's love and mercy. In John chapter 9, Jesus heals a man born blind. After the physical healing, the man goes through a process of receiving his spiritual sight. At first, the man is ignorant. He knows Jesus' name, but not where to find him. John chapter 9, verses 11 through 12. Later, he arrives at the truth that Jesus is a prophet, verse 17, and that he is from God, verse 33. Then, in speaking to Jesus, the man admits his ignorance and his need for the Savior. Jesus asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man replies, Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Verses 35 through 36. Finally, having seen the light spiritually, he says, Lord, I believe, and worships Jesus. Verse 38. Following the expression of faith from the man born blind, Jesus encounters some spiritually blind Pharisees. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. John chapter 9, verses 39 through 41. In other words, Jesus says, If you were truly ignorant, blind, you would have no guilt. It's because you are not ignorant. You are willfully unbelieving that you stand guilty before God. The principle Jesus lays down in John chapter 9 is that God does not condemn people for things they are unable to do. Sin is measured by the capacities or ability of people and by their opportunities of knowing the truth. If people had no ability to do the will of God, they could incur no blame. If they have all proper ability and no disposition, God holds them to be guilty. According to this principle, babies and young children who are unable to accept or reject Christ are not held accountable for unbelief. Before people mature enough to discern right from wrong, sometimes called reaching the age of accountability, it would seem that they are not held responsible by God. Toddlers sin, and they bear Adam's corrupt nature, but lacking the ability to understand the concept of right and wrong. They are under God's grace in our opinion. Other biblical antidotes, for example, David testifying that he would be reunited with his dead child after death in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, support the reasonable belief that infants go to heaven when they die. 
The same holds true for those with mental disabilities who cannot comprehend right and wrong. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.